open one of them. <laughs> you mean you don't like this? <laughs> Hi everyone, it's Kaylee. Today I have a very special tutorial for you on how to get professional looking photos through a zoom photo shoot without having to take pictures of the screen or screen cap. Recently, I did a Zoom photo shoot with my friend Megan, who is an artist and photographer. She showed me this method where she was able to control my laptop and camera through Zoom's remote control feature. I wanted to share this method so other creators have more tools for collaboration if distance and COVID safety is an issue. Before we go through the steps together, let's meet Megan. Hi, I'm Megan and I am the photographer for Kaylee Shoot. A few of the things that I do, aside from photography, I trained in dance for a really long time, um, and that's how Kaylee and I know each other. I paint, I draw, I make illustrations, I make jewelry, as you can see. Alright, let's go through the steps together. Step 1. Gather your tools. You're going to need a camera or a phone. You're also going to need a tripod or someone to help you out. The third thing you'll need is a laptop and a cord that connects your phone or camera to your laptop. So the last thing you want to think about is your location. Where in your house do you want to shoot? I would recommend shooting near a window with a curtain so it can diffuse some of the light. Step 2. Step 2. Go over your concept with your model or photographer. So in this step, you should share what your ideas are and how you want to collaborate. What do you want out of the project? A good way to do this is to send each other mood boards and to choose clothing together. You also want to make sure that you have all the props that you require for the shoot. Oh, and lastly, make sure to check the weather. You're going to want a sunny day with good lighting. Step 3, which is the most important step. And for this step, you're going to have two options. Number one only applies to you if you have a camera. So what you want to do is you want to find a tethering software that's compatible with your camera. For example, for me, I have the Panasonic Lumex G9, which is what I'll use as an example for today's tutorial. So it was really easy to find tethering software, basically just typing in Google your camera name and then tethering software. Once it's installed into your computer, you're going to want to run the software. Then you're going to have to connect your camera to your laptop through a cord. So once it's all connected, a little screen will pop up with all the controls to your camera. This is really important for the zoom call since this is where the photographer will be controlling your camera from. So here you have your shutter speed, your ISO, you can control the white balance, you can change all those things. So next, you're going to press the live view button, which is the LV button. And once you've pressed that, the live feed from the camera will pop up. So you're basically seeing what is coming from the camera in that very moment. And on the right hand side, there's a handy rotate button so your view can face right side up. So the second option is for people who will be shooting on a phone. So what you'll need is a screen mirroring app that allows your laptop to control your phone. So for me, I have a Samsung phone and an Apple laptop because um, what is brand loyalty? So basically for me, I had to download Samsung DeX, which connects my laptop to my phone so that my laptop is able to control my phone. Samsung DeX is a native app in most Samsung phones, so not everyone will have access to this app. If you have a different phone, you may have to do a Google search on what type of screen mirroring app will work on your phone. So what you're going to do is you're going to download on the Samsung website the version you need for your Mac or your Windows computer. So once you've downloaded Samsung DeX, you're going to run the software. And in order to do that, you're going to have to connect your phone through a cord to your laptop, or you can do it wirelessly. I would recommend the cord since there's less lag. You're going to press the Start Now button, and you'll see that the software is booting up. So this is how you're going to be able to control your phone from your computer. And in here, you're going to go to your camera app. So there it is, that's me. So that's the live feed from my phone to my computer. So what you're seeing is straight from the camera of my phone. Now we're on to step four. So once you have your camera app open, 
or you're tethering connected to your laptop, you can now open up Zoom. So once you're on your call, the model will need to share their screen with the photographer. They will need to share the screen with the tethering software or the phone connection. Once you've done that, it will look a little like this. So now you want to give your remote control to the photographer. So you're going to click remote control at the top and then you'll see a drop down menu and then you're going to click the name of the photographer who is shooting you. Once you've done that, they will have remote control of the screen you've shared with them which is the control to your camera or phone. So here, I'm no longer moving my cursor and it's the other person on the other end. Since it was just my boyfriend on the other end of the call, he wanted to do a photo inception and show himself taking a picture of himself. Now looking back at the tethering software and you are the photographer, here are some of the things you can adjust. So we have the f-stop that you can choose. We also have the shutter speed and as you can see Megan doing here, you can control the ISO. Let's take a look at my setup for this shoot. So what you are seeing will be from the model's point of view. Um, your right arm is out of frame all but yeah. Ooh, that's a nice position. Keep the body exactly where it is, but just change the arms a little bit. Yeah, that's really nice. Now from Megan's end, this is what the photographer is seeing. Ooh, that's nice. Can you stay oh, can you stay there but put your left arm a little bit further behind you so it's like exaggerated a little bit? Yeah. Well, that's nice. Yeah. So hard for me to tell if I get the picture because it lags. Uh, can you move forward just a little bit? Yeah. Now that we are finished with the steps to this tutorial, let's take it back to Megan for some challenges and tips she has for all of you. I'd say first, just be patient. It's a totally different process to tie into that, into being patient. Try to keep the communication going as much as you can. I know that that's applicable whether you're doing a Zoom shoot or not, but I found it personally really challenging to communicate over Zoom because it doesn't feel as natural. Don't be afraid to ask your model or subject to hold a pose or go back to a pose. Another thing is if there is a second pair of hands available on the model side of, of the Zoom, that would be really great. And I would like to thank Will. Thank you so much. He was the one moving the camera around if I needed it and would like to fix the Kaylee's hair and stuff, as you, I'm sure you will see in the video. That was really, really helpful. Uh, embracing it being a different process because, you know, part of the reason I really enjoy photography in person is, you know, you develop a certain muscle memory that is, in a lot of ways, really tactile. And, you know, you're manually adjusting settings on your camera maybe moving a prop, I don't know, or light, um, and you don't get that with the zoom shoot. So just embracing that it's different, it can be fun still. It was, Kaylee was amazing, Aww. and um, yeah, I hope you have fun doing it if you try it out. You're gonna do great. Thank you so much for watching my video. I had a great time shooting this tutorial. Also, a super big thank you to Megan for collaborating with me and having this fun experience with me. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. And if you want to be super kind to me, please hit that notification bell. Also, share this video with anyone who wants to create from a safe distance or who lives across the world from you. And if you do end up trying this, 
please leave me a comment below on how it went. If you're interested in following me or Megan on any other social media platforms, our links are in the description below. Alright, that's all I have for you today. Thank you once again for watching my video, and I'll see you next time. Bye, YouTube. Today was fun.